Okay, so for this lesson, I am going over applications of exponents, and this is basically word problems that involve exponents. If I can get this to go to the next slide. Come on, there we go. Okay. So last week when we were talking about linear word problems, we had simple interest, and I had mentioned compound interest as another type. This week, once we get into exponents, that's where we talk about compound interest. And this is where you, like if you have a savings account, you earn interest, and as long as you keep that money that you earned in there, you're earning interest on top of interest. It's this is also is with like loans, you know, you you have interest charged on the loan and then or on a credit card. If you don't pay it off, then you still have interest charged on top of that interest. So this is what most of the real world does, you know, as far as interest. So we've got two variations on the equation. The first one is a which stands for the amount. And it looks like my stylus is not working. So well, let me see if I can get this working. There we go. Um, so A is the amount, P is the principal. And then we've got 1 plus R because you're adding interest. And R is the interest rate as a decimal. And actually, it's very specific. It's the annual interest rate. So you're usually given the annual interest rate, but if you have interest monthly, it's different. You have to take that into account. So this first equation is for annual interest rate, and then T is you know, how many years you're getting interest. The second equation takes into account how much you're getting interest. So N is the number of times a year you get interest. So if you get it 12 times a year, then N is 12. So it's a slight variation on the formula. And if it's once a year, then N is equal to 1. And that's where we get back to that first equation. So I'm just going to start with some examples here of compound interest. We want to find the amount in an account after five years. So we're looking for the amount. So get my color again there. Amount, we're looking for it because it says find the amount after five years. So T is equal to five. If the initial investment, that's the principal, is, oops, that's supposed to say is, <laughs> $2,000 at a 4% interest compounded annually. So annually, so that's the annual interest rate. So that's R, which we want to convert as a decimal. So that's 0 0.04. You divide 4%, you divide it by 100. Uh, and it says compounded annually. So compounded means we're using the compound interest formula. So we have A equals P times 1 plus R to the T because it's annually, once a year. So you use the, the first one. So we're looking for A. So all we need to do is plug in our numbers. So we have 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.04 to the fifth power. And you can put this all in your calculator at once. But if you'd like to simplify it each step, we're going to Follow the order of operations. So you add inside the parentheses first. That gives us 1.04. Then we're going to do the exponent, 1.04 to the fifth power. So that's 2,000 times 1.21665902. And you're going to get a very long decimal. And then we multiply that by 2,000. Get 2433.305805. Now, this is the amount is money, and money always has two decimal places. So we are rounding to two decimal places. So after the 0.30, we look to see what's following. There's a 5 
which means we round up. So this is going to be $2,433.31. So that's the amount in the account after five years. This one now, same sort of problem. Find the amount in an account after four years. So again, we're looking for the amount. And now we've got four years. If the initial investment, I was copy and pasting, so I made the same error, is $10,000 invested at 5% interest. So that's 0.05. And then it says compounded monthly. So N is 12 because we have 12 months in a year. So now we're going to use the other formula. A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the N T. So that's going to be a few more steps here. So um, I will to go from the left here. So we have $10,000 for P, 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12. And then in the exponent, we have 12 times 4. So it's 4 years, 12 times a year. So order of operations, we have 10,000. I need to work inside the parentheses first, and division comes before addition, so I have to do 0 0.05 divided by 12. So that's 1 plus 0 0.0041, um, and then it's just a 6 repeating. And in the same step, you can also multiply your exponent 12 times 4. So that gives us 48. So I need to add inside. So I get 1.0041. If I rounded that, that would round to 67. And then to the 48. So usually you want to have at least three decimal places. Five is really good. So we've got one, two, six decimal places here. So if you have too few decimal places, like if you round too early, your answer will be, well, there, there will be issues with the rounding and you'll be off. And if you try to do this in uh, Connect Math, it will mark it as wrong because you're too far away. So you want to use more decimal places than less, at least three to five. Five is really good. I've got six here. So I'm going to just take this to the exponent 48. So I have 10,000 times 1.2209. Four eight zero eight, and then I multiply by ten thousand. One two two zero nine point one four eight zero eight. So again, this is money. So we want to round to two decimal places. So because after my line it's an eight, we round up. So we're going to have $12,000, 209.15, so $12,209.15. So area problems, I realized that I actually I put these in with the live session last week on linear, and they're not linear because <laughs> they, they often have exponents, specifically area of a circle has exponents. Some of these are kind of linear, like the area of a rectangle usually ends up being area of a square that has an exponent. So some of these do end up having exponents involved, while the other ones are linear. So it's kind of depends on the, the situation. So find the area of a pizza with a diameter of 16 inches. So and you've got your pizza, that's the center. The diameter is the distance across. And so that is 16 inches. Now the diameter is twice the radius. 
And in order to use the, the find the area of a circle, we our equation uses the radius, not the diameter. So we need to find the radius first, and then we can plug it into our equation to find the area. So we have 16 for the diameter, and that's equal to twice the radius, 2r. So that will give you r is 8, because you just divide both sides by 2. So then I need to plug this in. So I have pi times 8 squared. So first we square 8. 8 squared is 64. So this is going to be 64 pi. So if you do not have a button for pi, you can approximate it by 3.14. I have a pi button on my calculator, so I can just hit that button and I do 64 times pi, and it will multiply it out for me. And that's 201.061928, and presumably it would keep going. So for a problem like this, if it doesn't tell us where to round, they gave us a whole number, so we're going to usually try to round to the same amount. So we'd round to a whole number. So I'm rounding right after my decimal. And the zero means that I don't round up, so I just cut it off. So we're going to get 201. And you need to make sure you have your units. This is area, so it's not inches. It's inches squared. So area is always something squared. So our area of the pizza is 200 and inches, 201 inches squared. Now, um, I also had this on the word problem from last week, and while the volume of a rectangle is linear, the other ones here are not because they have exponents. So volume of a square has an exponent, volume of a sphere, volume of a cylinder. And so these fall under word problems involving exponents. So we're going to find the volume of a sphere with a radius of three centimeters. So I am really bad at drawing spheres. Usually, let me try this again. Let's see. The back we do a dashed, and then I kind of turn this into a circle. So that's not the best. Maybe this needs to be dashed too. So you can kind of see that it's 3D. <laughs> Doing my best there. And this is the center. And so they do give us the radius here, which is 3 centimeters. So our volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's the volume of a sphere. So I have 4 thirds pi, and then I'm going to plug in 3 cubed. So 3 cubed is 27. So this is 4 thirds pi times 27. So I can actually kind of make my math easier on me. 27 I can divide by 3 and that leaves me 9. So this is just kind of simplifying fractions. 4 times 9 is 36. So this is 36 pi. So I'm just going to put this in my calculator, 40, 36 times pi, and we get 113.0973355. So again, because we started with a whole number, we're going to round to a whole number. So we'd round, because it's a zero after that, we just basically truncate it, and we have 113. Now our units are centimeters cubed. So the units for volume, because it's three dimensions, are cubed. The, volume, the units for area, it's two dimensions, it's squared. So the volume of this sphere is 113 centimeters cubed, or cubic centimeters if you want to word it that way. So um, that's all that I had because 
um, when you have exponents involved, there's not really too much other than just plugging things in. You're not going to learn how to solve for numbers in the exponent until you get to college algebra. So when you get to college algebra, you'll learn a lot more applications. But for now, the most basic applications here are volume, area, and then the most important one that you use the most is compound interest. And once you know this formula, you can use this in your own life to kind of estimate how much interest you're going to have to pay on a credit card. And you'd have to look up your terms to see how many times it does interest, which is usually daily. And it won't be perfect, but it can give you a good estimate and really can help you with your budgeting. So um, if you have any questions, you can let me know. Um, just to give you, oh, I'm going to stop sharing and I want to make sure I look at my calendar. So, you know, I rescheduled this because I have Monday off for uh, Labor Day. So that's why it was, you know, early. The following week, I have family in town, so I will not be able to, let's see, so that's going to be week five. During the entirety of week five, or most of week five, um, back part of week five, I'm going to be out because I have family in town. So um, I'll probably be doing it at this time again next Friday, just for consistency, because that's before my family comes into town. Um, then week six, it should be back to normal. So for the two next two weeks, we'll have it at this time, and then we'll be back to normal after that. So just wanted to give you a heads up. So if you have any questions, let me know, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.